So this is the number six masterclass for impact funded by Study New South Wales. And tonight we have Enrique Vargas de Campo with us. He's a senior strategic partner and manager at Google. Uh, today, the main theme of the day is how to nail an interview. So we have an interview ninja with Enrique. Hi, Enrique, how are you today? Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. I don't know where you're based, but I'm sure it's morning for some and afternoon for others. Or is, are we all in Australia today? I think so. Everybody's shy. From what I see, Great. most yes. of them are in Australia. Awesome. Okay, um, I leave you the words. Perfect, leave it with me. Um, I'll just go like this uh, when I want you to go on to the next slide and yeah. we'll move from there, okay? Yeah. Um, so well, for today's agenda, I don't know, I think I might have used the white color here for, for the font, but um, Oh, we have a surprise guest, by the way. Mm. You want to sit over here? Hello, where's the camera? Just oh here. no, Paula, you're there. <laughs> that is a surprise. That is a wonderful surprise. There we go. Do you like this? Is that be okay, or do you want I, to see? I think it's good for us. I don't to know how ourselves. to use Zoom, so I'm gonna let Paula control it here. Done. Okay. Oh, way better. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you, everyone. I'm just going to close the door for the noise. So for today's um, for today's lesson, we're going to learn a little bit about um, how to nail an interview. Um, we're going to start with some tips and tricks, and at the end of the session, we're going to do a mock interview where Pau is actually going to be a head of sales for a really interesting company called Velocopter, and she's going to be interviewing me for my first job. Um, so I'm a student, just like you guys, and I'll be, um, I've sent my resume, I've done all the things that are here. As a recap from last time, I've contacted my references. Hope you you would have done that too at this point when you've already got to the point of the interview. Um, I know the job description. Um, I've thought about what what I'm bringing to the table, I have my list of those eight to 10 assets that we discussed last time. And hopefully, if we look at the next slide, Kara, um, your resume looks a little bit like this. So just as a recap from last time, we went through how to build a really strong resume. So you're, you have a brief resume, only one to two pages. Um, it starts with a summary. You have your contact information is correct. You outline your achievements, not just your responsibilities. It's in chronological order and it's correctly labeled using that ATS format that we talked about last time. Um, so and, for those of you that haven't watched the previous webinar, there's two that comes before this one too. Please, even if it's put it on twice as fast, watch it because it will definitely give you the foundation if this is the first one you watch with us. Absolutely. And remember last time also we gave you guys a template um for building your own resume so hopefully that template is helpful for you it's ready to go ready to be edited ready to get your stuff in there so that's a template that i personally use for my own resume so i hope that you like that um so let's get started should we move on to the next one thank you very much uh maybe the next one <laughs> All right, so first thing is preparing for your for your first interview. Um, so I'm going to start a little bit with how to prepare um, the answers and questions that you're going to get on your first interview. So my first thing for you is uh, first impressions matter. Um, so remember, this is your first job, probably, um, or if it's not your first job, it's the job that you're going for to kickstart your career, you're a student um, and this first impression, even though it may not be the reason why you do end up or not getting the job, it definitely will skew the perception of the interviewer um, to be positive or negative. Seven seconds for someone to decide whether they like you or not. And after the seven seconds, if they haven't liked you, they're not going to be paying attention to you. The head is going to try to analyze why is it that they don't like you and then they're not focusing. So this is why first impression is so important. Absolutely. Um, every answer you give 
from this first impression onwards is going to be slightly skewed positively or negatively. Um, and there's different interviewers as well, right? There, there are interviewers that are very conscious of this uh, unconscious bias. Um, they're conscious about it, so they they consciously try to to remove themselves from disliking or disliking the person in front of them. But the truth is that once that first impression, the first ten seconds or seven seconds of file set um, happen, it's already done. It's too late. Um, it's too late, exactly. But don't worry if they don't like you or you didn't cause a good impression. It's not like probably not gonna be a reason why you don't get a job. But it doesn't help or it doesn't hurt to cause a good impression and then from then this moment onwards every answer that you give has uh, has been positively skewed um, yeah we know our first impressions like the the smile the tone of voice the way you dress your respect and also connect with them but if you're going for a, for a job at a startup like what you're going to be talking about is figure out how you can win them in a different way like i've seen some people coming for interviews for me where they bring me a coffee hmm. But more than the coffee, why don't they send me a text message through Instagram before and ask me, what's my favorite coffee? Because mm. then you've got like the more touch points, like in sales, the more touch points you have, the faster the conversion. And I think it's the same with the first impression is make sure you tick all of the boxes from mm. tone of voice to the smile, bring a little gift. Like I've had, I had one person once coming in for an interview and she brought a pitch deck in paper. So she would tell her story before we even started. And she had put so much energy into it that we ended up giving her the job. Mm. So it's so important. First impression is everything. And I think what you were saying about the first job, I think a lot of international students, it's not the first job in their life, but definitely the first real job in Australia. Mm -hmm. So you have to be very humble about it. Because I've also seen people coming in for the first impression, like with a lot of confidence and too much confidence comes out as arrogance in Australia and it doesn't work, right? Because <laughs> some countries it's okay. In Australia, we just don't tolerate. Yeah, arrogance. I don't know if it's too much confidence, but definitely arrogance. Yeah, you don't want to be arrogant. Yeah. And yeah, first impression, very important. Yeah. So don't be arrogant, even if you were top CEO in your company in South America or in Southeast Asia, yeah. in Australia, whatever job you're applying, you can't use yeah. that and be arrogant. And even if you're, you were, a janitor before and you're applying for something like something similar to that you still can't be arrogant it's just not not a, a, it's, it's kind of frowned upon in australia whereas in other cultures it's actually not yeah. um so let's go to the next one so another thing you need to do is know the company so you'd be surprised how many people mm -hmm. go to an interview and they don't know too much about the company that they're interviewing for they know everything about the job but they've just kind of applied to so many jobs and they just want to get their first job that they haven't done that proper research on the company. So make sure that you check out their website, you read their blog if they have one, you read news about the company. So what have they been doing that's actually gone out there and like to the news, to, to the internet or to the newspapers lately. Um, and very important, learn their mission, their vision and their values. Uh, so these are things that they're, they're worth knowing because once you're in there, once you're sitting in front of that person that's that's gonna hire you, hopefully, um, that's something that if you touch, if you mention those things, it just shows that you've done your research and it's gonna skew that, again, that perception from the interview very positively if you're someone that's coming prepared to the interview. And it shows that you care and that you're interested. Yeah. And it doesn't take long to do this research like mission vision and value and Absolutely. skim over a blog like you can skim over the title of the last five blogs yeah yeah literally like yeah. 30 minutes uh hopefully you spend an hour but in 30 minutes you can know a lot about a company um so another one though so as you know from the company you also need to know about the about the hiring manager mm -hmm. so obviously pow uh, the role we've given her for the mock interview is a fake role head of sales of helicopter but the truth is that if i was interviewing for the academy of entrepreneurs and i was going to be interviewing me i'd definitely go to her linkedin and see what's her experience like what has she done before academy of entrepreneurs um, obviously as a ceo like what are her responsibilities but then um I, I can see here that she was the founder of P, P2R, sorry, PR2, 
Um, and that was um, a PR company, right? So I can tell, okay, so she's somebody that if I know my stuff on PR and networking, that sort of thing, that's probably going to impress her more than if I'm a very analytical financial person or like I can speak her language and know the things that are really resonate and mm -hmm. create those aha moments and like not her head moments, right? Yeah. Um, and I guess also the amount of people you have in common, I think that also plays a huge effect. Mm. So if you're going for an interview, don't be scared of even like connecting and adding the person's going to be interviewing you. And then you can drop the names. It's like, oh, mm. this person's my neighbor or yeah, we met absolutely. at a conference and we're both interested about, I don't know, sustainability. And then maybe the person that's interviewing us is interested in sustainability. But see, that's because you're a PR and, person. Yes. <laughs> So if you're going for an analytical <laughs> yeah. job, maybe that's not something that... You can analyze you know the data I mean? of how many people you have in yeah. common. But and see, that's sense. exactly my point. So you do your, yes. your, your research and then yes. you see that I was actually yes. impressed by these things. Yes, and I love how you've seen, not what I'm doing with the Academy of Entrepreneurs, you've seen the previous roles as well. Absolutely. It's the whole journey. So it's, it's like the digital to digital, so important. Completely. Um, and then the next thing is having your lists of assets ready. So we touched base on this on the first, the second, and now for the third time, like I'm going to tell you guys this on every single one of the session, maybe not the one next time, but I'll just mention it just to make sure that you really nail this. So eight to 10 assets, what are you bringing to the company? Um, what are those things that, that you're really good at? And you know what, bring that paper with you to the interview and maybe don't put it out on the interview and don't read them out in the interview, but read them to yourself right before the interview because it's going to give you a lot of confidence and it's going to remind you what are those things that you're really good at. That's and a if, very good technique. Just yeah. like rewires the positivity and self-belief. Yeah, there's people that do different things to, to gain confidence before a presentation. Really there's good. body language techniques. They stand up with their arms really wide open or with their hands on their hips and like really power position. And that gives them confidence is people that read something that or calm down or meditate. I'd say if you're going for an interview, nail your assets. Like what are the things that you're amazing at? Um, and then the next thing, the next tip I would say is prepare some basic answers. So there are questions that will come in almost every interview especially when you're applying for your first job or for an entry job. Um, and you have to prepare those answers because they can throw you off if you haven't done that. So questions like, why do you want to work for us? So you have to understand the company, the job, like, why do you want to be there, right? What are your strengths and weaknesses? So have you thought of that? Like, have you thought of your weaknesses as well? Like, how can you answer that question and be honest, but at the same time show that either their weaknesses you're working on or how those weaknesses you, you bring them to the table and they are you, but they help you be the person that you are and succeed at your job. Um, what learn learnings have you brought from your previous position? So even if you were waiting tables or washing dishes, what have you learned from that? Have you learned customer service? Have you learned how to deal with angry customer or have you, I don't know, learned how to respond to a manager that's not happy with you or even like, have you learned how to deal with, um, with people praising you even, you know, like, um, have you learned resilience, um, like negotiation techniques? There's so many things you can learn and it doesn't matter the job you've done before or the volunteering work, or even in school, the projects that you work with, there are definitely learnings that you have, that you have to think and be prepared to answer like these are the things that I bring to the table um, and that I'm bringing from my previous experience. Yeah, interesting you say that. I interviewed a girl, I think it was on Thursday or Friday last week, and she was saying how her weakness was that she only performs when she's under pressure, mm. which is interesting because a lot of people don't perform. So here she was putting herself down, and I just went, This is great. Mm. We multitask all day long. So if you perform better under pressure, Welcome to the family. Yeah. So sometimes your biggest weakness can become your biggest strength. I think with me, like, and you, I guess, as well, we love doing a lot of things and learning. Mm. So a job that is challenging keeps us motivated. Completely. But some people love the routine. They love clocking yeah. out. And our strength becomes the opposite of theirs. So mm. it's so important 
understanding your strengths and weaknesses because no one is good at everything and no one is bad at everything either. Yeah. So the more you are aware, the more you can fit yourself into the right role and the right OSU type of business. So I'm called me yesterday asking me for a job and he's a very successful entrepreneur from original, originally mm. from your country. Oh. And but he lives here and he's doing really like he's got a humongous startup back in Chile. And he was sharing with me how like, because of his expertise of managing like multi-billion dollar projects on a daily basis, he wants to work in a small, medium-sized company so he can have control over the projects because mm -hmm. he's been headhunted by some really big companies and he's just like, I can't. I need to be doing a lot of things and mm -hmm. being able to also move and get fast results. Yeah. And when he said that, I'm like, that's so cool that you understand that because coming from a very famous name who's very well known in the industry, you'd expect him to accept the job in the big four. Mm -hmm. And he just went, I have the office and I will not accept it, but I want something in the startup or medium-sized business yeah. with the way that I can move more the control. pieces around mm -hmm. to be able to deliver. I think more than control is deliver results because yeah, he's very results driven from what I understood. Yeah, but very it's interesting cool. how you need to understand your weaknesses. Yeah. And if you don't know, I always say, go and do internships. Because the more you do internships that you don't like, the more you'll be able to get yeah. closer to what you love. I think actually knowing what you don't like is yeah. as important, if yes. not even more important. Than, yes. Because sometimes you think you know what you want, but then you realize when you're doing it, that's you're not like, what you no. want. So knowing what you don't want, yeah. I personally thought it took me longer knowing what I didn't like and didn't want than knowing what I wanted, if yeah. that makes any sense um but i see we've gone on to the next slide so sorry the one before um the yeah so the one before this one was preparing some some ads or some questions that are typical questions so this one oh sorry one forward please yeah thanks yeah one oh, okay there we go <laughs> yeah okay no, 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 you're back <laughs> Okay, so the one before Kara, sorry. It's funny how Zoom takes like a minute. Yeah, yeah, I think it's just a bit Because every time you still be like, change next, I'm like, I already clicked on my yeah. to see the next. I'm fast with this, the Zoom slow. So we went through some of the questions that you may be asked, but there's two questions that in my personal experience, they're very, like fairly, it's fair to say that you probably will get asked these two questions. I can't guarantee it, but I can, it's safe to assume that you, if it's not this exact question, you will be asked a variation of this. Mm -hmm. So the two questions are, tell me a bit about yourself, just as an icebreaker, and then why do you think you're a good fit for this position or this job? So when they ask you, tell me a little bit about yourself, that's your moment to shine, right? That's your moment to become memorable. So make sure you're highlighting something interesting about yourself and maybe include one or two things that you feel that have had a big impact in your life or in your career. Um, so like moving countries, volunteer work, previous job, family business, team sports, all these things you can call out and say like, okay, so I'm really passionate about, so I, but I'll speak for myself and I, I'll say, um, yeah, I've, moved, I've lived, Australia is my seventh country I lived in, just to show me to quickly like make new friends. Um, I love like situations when I'm uncomfortable and don't know anyone, like all those things, you can really relate to things that might be desirable for a job that you're applying for. Uh, so make sure you say something interesting about yourself. Everyone's got something interesting to say. Um, and yeah, try to be memorable in this part. And, and then why do you think you're a good fit for this position? Then hopefully you know the job description by heart you know what the minimum requirements are and what the preferred requirements are as well. And then this is your moment to match those, uh, those minimum requirements with your assets um, and with your experience as well. One question that I see a lot of students when they come for an interview on the second, these two questions, it's almost a guarantee that you'll get them in Australia. But the second one, a lot of people come in and they say, I'm really good for this job because I want to learn. And in Australia, salaries are really high. So when we hear it's because I want to learn, we just go, but I'm paying you to give me a result. I'm not paying you point. to learn. So as much as we love upskilling our team, you need to come like 90% ready for the role. That's the way that I feel. Because mm -hmm. every time I get someone saying that or I see students saying it, 
because it's a humble way of going and really committed and I want to learn, but we need results. In mm. a lot of countries, they can afford a few weeks of training yeah. here, especially in the startup world, and most businesses are going towards startup and contract setup. Mm. We need immediate results. Yeah, absolutely. And actually, that's a very good that. point because you don't want to be, and I, I have heard that before, in fact, mm. and I think being there to learn, I, I would completely agree with you. It's yeah. You're not paying somebody to come to learn and you can shift the answer and say like you're a quick learner and that you're if there's things that you're not familiar with or that you don't have experience that you will learn them quickly and that you'll adapt quickly and that sort of thing but don't say that your main purpose there why you're a good fit is because you're <laughs> there to, to learn because <laughs> um, we'll look at you we'll just go well you can go back to university or exactly. to a course yeah yeah or you pay me if i'm going to be teaching yeah. you right but um, that's why exactly. again your list of assets is so important um so if we go to the next slide um the other thing i think um it's i guess a tip for you guys prepare questions in advance so when the interview is over, your interviewer 90% of the time will ask you, do you have questions for me? Or are there any questions from your side? That's not the interview is over. You can go ahead and ask me like, when do I get the job or um, how much am I gonna get paid? That's actually another interview question. If mm -hmm. like really see it like that. So getting asked um, to like, if Pao asks me, uh, do you have any questions for me? That's actually my cue to impress her with the level of questions that I have. So things that you can ask are related to the role specifically or to the team culture, to the company. Um, those are the things that you should be focus focusing on. Questions to avoid. Uh, don't ask how much you're gonna get paid or how many hours you have to work um, or when will I find out if I got the job, those sort of questions, because you can touch base with the recruiters or um, even afterwards via email and you will hear back from them but it's not the moment to ask those menial questions so don't don't miss this opportunity to impress once more um, your interviewer by asking them really pointy questions about the role even about themselves if you feel that's relevant um, how do they like working for the company what's their favorite thing about their job um, how are they as a if they say you're hiring manager like how would they handle a situation with um, with a hiree, right? With an employee. So very, very different ways that like you can research online, obviously, what are good uh, questions, but come prepared with questions to ask your interviewer. Yeah, I think that's a really good question when you ask the business interview, why do you like working here? Mm. And get them to talk about the culture and why they like. Because I think that says a lot as well about the culture of the business. And if the person is interviewing, because sometimes the person is interviewing it doesn't like the company. It's probably a good sign you should go for another job. Yeah. Which also happens, like, especially if you're in Australia right now, and I guess over the next few years, there's more jobs out there oh, yeah, than completely. people. So <laughs> you're the one with the power of choosing. So don't take anything. It's nice to build that connection and get to, live, get to know who's interviewing you and just make them feel oh so special. Because yeah. at the end of the day, they're the ones that are going to push your application to the next level. Mm -hmm. oh, that's a great point. Um, and speaking of questions, if we go to the next one. So this is a bit of a, I wanted to add it here because I am, it can happen, maybe not to the degree that I've had it at Google, for example, but um, you have to mentally prepare for an oddball question. So what is an oddball, oddball question? Is a, It's a question that will throw you off the rhythm of the interview so it probably won't be about yourself or about your experience, but rather about something that you're not prepared to answer. So um, employers often like to add, ask these questions to see how you react under pressure and when you're on, like, put on the spot in the spotlight. Um, in these types of scenarios, you always have to remain professional and calm and don't say, I don't know, to these types of questions, give them an answer because nine out of 10 times they're, or actually 10 out of 10 times with this type of questions, they're not actually looking for an answer. They're looking for your thought process to get to that answer. So if you ask me how many drops of rain are in that cloud over there, and I say, I don't know, then, well, you didn't handle that very well, did you? But if I say, well, 
that cloud seems to be 10 meters by 20 meters uh, cubic meters and in every cubic meter there's a hundred thousand uh, droplets of rain and then I, if you give an answer like that that's a way better way to handle that situation because it doesn't matter if you say a million or 10 billion drops of rain in that cloud in the end of the day is how did you get to the answer um, yeah then when you go to an interview it's also very important to to bring only what you're going to need so don't bring a lot of stuff but also also don't bring like don't not bring anything okay so don't show up with your to the interview without a pen and a paper for example like you want you're probably going to want and need to take notes at some point um, it's also a good show of um, caring that you bring a copy of your CV or your portfolio. Uh, you can bring your references if you wish to, or if you're applying for a job that's technical or um, like, let's say if you're a videographer, like we had somebody ask a question in the past, you probably need to bring your laptop, right? Um, <laughs> and if you do need to do that, make sure that the only thing open in the laptop, when like as soon as you open it, it's ready to go your video nothing else open, no distractions, it's ready to play. Um, the only thing I would say definitely don't bring to the interview is your phone. So nothing worse than a phone ringing or vibrating in the middle of an interview. Um, so just switch it off or even better, just leave it in the car or outside if you can. Then <clears throat> just to wrap up this, this part of the of the tips and tricks and that sort of thing. Um, there are some things that you think they're common sense, but I'm going to say them anyway, because I really don't want you guys to miss this. So one, like first thing is be early, like don't try to be on time, because if you think you're going to be on time, there's a chance you might be late. If you're planning to be early, you leave a little room, a little room to, you know, like if something happens. So Definitely try to be early. Don't be late for sure. Know your resume. So very likely that the hiring manager would have read your resume right before the interview or even have it with them during the interview if you didn't bring it yourself. And they will ask questions directly about your resume. Uh, it can maybe not happen, but very, very likely that they might ask something. And if not, they would have 100% read your resume right before. Um, highlight your strengths. Be polite and confident. So like, um, like um, Paul said before, don't be arrogant. It's a massive difference between being arrogant and being confident. So may, definitely be very polite. Um, don't bluff. So be honest. So if you're caught bluffing, um, if they ask you a question that you think you know the answer to, or you think you can bluff your way through, um, it's probably not a good sign and very likely that if you're not caught through the bluff midway the interview, you might be even worse while doing the job. So be honest and actually showing that you don't know things or um, something like that, it's not, it's not a bad thing, you know? Um, and finally answer the question. So I really highlight that one because answering the question, like I can't tell you how many people I've heard or seen or even interviewed myself where I asked them questions or I see how somebody's asking them a question and they don't get to the answer. Uh, they just kind of talk their way through and around, but actually never get to the or point. Or they have a very long story and you're like, I need to yeah. get to the next question. I need to yeah. interview someone else. Completely. So answer the question. If the, if the question is two plus two and you know the answer is four, then say four. If you want to know if you want to explain how you got to four and it's, it's going to take you very like a very short amount of time, then explain that. But you don't need to say, well, who invented the calculator? Exactly, who invented <laughs> the calculator, and then never say four, because uh, that's the worst you can do. Aside being late. <laughs> um, so okay, guys, this is the part where we're going to have a bit of a mock interview. So it's my first job. So Paul here was grateful enough to come. Uh, to my house and and help me out with this part. So Pao is going to be the hiring manager. She's the head of sales of Velocopter. 
Uh, Velocopter, for those who, do, who don't know this, is a startup. They're pre-IPO. Uh, they're flying taxis, basically. They're based in Germany. Um, and the job description is a junior sales associate. So basically, they want somebody fresh out of uni, uh, ready to help out with the sales team and kind of scale their strategy. Um, so we're going to, so don't go to the next one, Kara. Leave it here until we're done with the interview. Uh, because next we're going to do a little bit of an analysis of how the interview went, okay? So I'm going to step out of the frame and I'm going to knock the door and cue. <laughs> Hello, thank you for making time to join us. How Hi. are you, Kiki? Welcome. I'm How's your great. day been? Yeah, it's been great. Thank you for asking. Um, I brought you a little resume of thank myself. Thank you. Thank uh, you so much. Very kind of you. Thank you for making the time to print it out for us. No worries. My pleasure. So, Kiki, tell me, tell me a little bit about yourself. What brings you here? What attracted you to come in for this interview today? Yeah, that's actually a great question, Paolo. So a little bit about myself, I'm a technophile, so I love, love, love technology. Um, as a personal hobby, I love aviation and flying drones and that sort of thing. So like, I'm obsessed with drones. I literally put them apart, put them back together. I know internally how they work and like, there's nothing that like excites me more than flying my drone and finding cool things around and that sort of thing. Um, my dream has always been on top of a drone. Unfortunately, like except for you guys, they're not big enough for me yet, uh, but maybe one day. Um, and yeah, like I'm very passionate about a number of different things. So I play team sports, for example. I, I used to do rowing when I lived in Panama. Um, I, like, I think my best experience from rowing has been really getting to that point where you're synchronized with your team and you're all moving in one direction, really gaining speed. It's really taught me like the beauty of teamwork mm -hmm. and, and how you can literally do things better and faster if you're all synchronized and have a good energy between you. Um, and I love volunteering. So I've volunteered in the past for the Red Cross. Um, it's not as fancy as it sounds. Uh, honestly, I was just in the mall um, I had a Red Cross table and my job was to try to recruit people to get donations for the Red Cross and specifically recurring donations. So those are the ones that are really um, helping Red Cross do the amazing things that they do all across the world. Um, so yeah, that's me in a nutshell. Amazing. And where did your passion for aviation and drones and technology come from? So that's a great question. Um, I don't know where it came from. I think it's just from moving around so many countries and always being like with planes and that sort of thing. But technology is something that is always, I've always been passionate about. Um, and drones, it's just, I think the epiphany of this type of technology. So I can't wait to see how, like what the next best big thing is in the drones, uh, in the drones world. I've got a question for you. If you could create anything with the next technology or drone, what would you do? <laughs> I would literally, and this is why I'm applying for this job, I would definitely create a drone that I can fly either automatically, so like a self-driving car, but a drone, or um, I would create a drone that I can ride. Mm -hmm. um, that's if I had the, the technology and the expertise that uh, that's what I would be focused on. That's fantastic. And as you've probably seen in our website, one of our core values is to create impact. And how was your experience working in Red Cross? What attracted you towards volunteering and working in such a big organization on a hard position such mm. as the sales desk? Yeah, that's a really good question. So I think what really attracted me is the mission and vision of the Red Cross how they're helping people around the world, how like all the work that they're doing all over the world in every country, especially in, in areas of conflict. Um, I'm really passionate about that coming from South America. I've seen the work that they do firsthand. So when I moved to Australia, I just wanted to be a part of that. And really the only thing that I can bring with my level of expertise at the moment is I don't have the money to donate. I don't have the expertise to work for them. Um, and honestly, it scares me a little bit. So I thought, okay, what's the next best thing? And it's try to help them raise that money and those, those funds. Mm -hmm. um, and to your question, the things I learned from it are like definitely resilience and I learned objection handling as well. So mm -hmm. I really know now how to talk to people 
And when they don't want to donate, what are the things I need to say to, to help like kind of close the deal, mm -hmm. if you may. Um, and I've lost fully that fear of rejection. Mm -hmm. So I can literally go talk to anyone right now and I have no fear. So talking about talking, this role involves a lot of talking. Why did you decide and apply? We've got many roles at the moment going on. Why did you apply for the sales position? That's a really great question. And I think the answer is the same answer to why I applied to the Red Cross. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm very, very passionate about aviation and drones and flying drones and that sort of thing. And very passionate about technology. And honestly, Velocopter is the company of my dreams. Like you guys are at the cutting edge of drone technology, of aviation. I've read on the news that you guys just got approval from the Aviation Federation of Germany to actually start flying drones in Germany and flying people in inner cities like Frankfurt, Berlin, and, and Hamburg. Um, you already have the approvals, obviously, in, in Israel and in Singapore. So just the fact that you guys already are an operational company with flying drones, flying literally people in your city from their meeting in point A to their meeting in point B, that just blows my mind. That's exactly my dream job so i'm not gonna leave here without a no as an answer <laughs> so talking about that so for us to give you a yes you also might be able to, you will need to perform from the beginning we're a startup we have a small budget we have a small team and we need fast results so what ideas do you have that you would like to bring and implement straight away to deliver fast results in the first 90 days in the role that's a yeah that's a very good question so ideas to deliver fast results not sure about fast results because it is still an unknown company and it's it's a very hard thing to sell um but if i want to go quick and fast i would start with networking and pr so i would use my own my own assets my own experience that i've had from my volunteering work in the red cross and the same thing i did there for individuals in a mall on the table i can do for velocopter i can pick up the phone I can ring every single company in the city that I'll be based and I will make sure that I get space for Velocopters taxis and I get their executives excited about Velocopter for their next meeting. So when they're in the city trying to get to the next meeting, their CEO is late, like his time is precious. What is $300 that you guys charge per fly in your city? What is $300 for a CEO is that if I can save him an hour of his time? So that's what I'm really excited about. And that's what I think I bring to the table. So talking about maximizing here at our company, we value a lot, allowing every team member to use the natural strengths. What would you say are your top superpowers and how will they add value to this role that you're applying for? Okay. Um, I hadn't thought about that. So superpower has never been asked that before. I have, if you give me just, 10 seconds to think about it. So my superpowers definitely would be around relationship building and networking. And I think I would 100% apply those superpowers to creating a portfolio of clients that they trust me and they rely on me when they require something from Velocopter. I wanna go out, meet people, network, go to the right events, go like rip, knock on the right doors, ring the right phones. And when people pick up, I want to start doing what I do best, which, which is building relationships and networking. And once I'm done doing that, I want to build long lasting relationships using my relationship building superpower and make sure that I've nailed that relationship and I become a consultant for them when they, when they think of transportation in their company. Fantastic. And I've seen your resume that you lived in Colombia as well. Mm. So I've got a no, non velocopter question for you. Okay. Just out of curiosity, how many tires do you think are sold every year in Colombia? Just for us to understand your notion about the countries you've lived <laughs> and problem solving across different industries. Oh, wow. How many tires are, are sold, sold in, in Colombia, Colombia every year? Every year. Would you mind if I take a minute to... Of course. Yes. I'm just going to bring yes. my handy pen and paper, which I brought to the meeting. So, 
So, um, it's a minute past, and just I'm going to start. I, I don't know the answer. I'm going to start saying that, but I will tell you what I think the answer is and my train of thought to get to that answer. Okay. So, in Colombia, the population of Colombia is roughly 50 million people. 30% um, of those people, I estimate, that have cars based on their age and gender and all of that. Um, each car has four tires per car. So 50, sorry, 30% uh, of 50 million is uh, 15 million. That means there's 60 million cars in Colombia right now. Um, from the 60 million tires, let's say that you're required to change your tires every five years. So that means that 3 million cars require new tires every, every year. And that translates to roughly, no, not to roughly, to exactly 12 million tires. So from those 12 million tires, only half, let's say half of people actually change their tires when it's time to change them. So that means that I'd say roughly 6 million tires are sold in Colombia every year. So that's just an estimate. Obviously, I made a lot of assumptions, um, but I know the population of Colombia, and I think I, I've, I've made the right assumptions to get to the answer of 6 million tires. Thank you for Colombia. coming up with that answer. Thank you for showing us your train of thoughts as well. My pleasure. So, Kiki, thank you so much for your time today. Before we finish up, do you have any questions for us today? Yeah, actually, I would like to know what do you like the most about working for Velocopter? I love our growth strategy vision, how we see the important impacts that we can add in every country that we go into. But I also love traveling, so I love the opportunity of being able to build really strong teams around the world. They love what they do, they're collaborating on a global level, but very scalable, because as we know, drones now are being used for flying people, but hopefully we can use it in social impact work as well. So yes, so that's one of the main reasons that I love working in the company. It's the values, it's the impact, and the, the vision of growth around the world. Amazing. Even more excited to start here then. Thank Lovely you for your time. You. I'll get back to you in the next couple of days. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. See you soon. Okay, how was that? <laughs> <laughs> that was a good, a good mock interview, actually. I, I want to like work for you now. <laughs> Um, so guys, let's go to the next one, Kara. So a little bit of a breakdown of the questions and answers. So obviously we went a little bit off script there, uh, but as it does happen, as it happens, it absolutely. Um, I genuinely have to say, I actually would like to write questions that I will ask candidates um, during an interview before the interview, and I'd say maybe ask them the first question, and then it completely goes off topic. Uh, but I try to keep it so that the questions that are written are relevant to the situation that they're, they've explained. Uh, but yeah, when this, this is probably what Pao, she was taking notes during the interview, what her notes might look like. So when she asked me, tell me about yourself, um, she writes the main things like, oh, he's, he loves tech, he loves aviation, he likes uh, flying drones. And then in the feedback, she, she can say like, oh, he seems passionate about our company and our technology. He's friendly, confident, would be great fit with the team. Um, so that sort of things is what interviewers will be analyzing when you answer these questions. So what did you learn during your Red Cross experience um, or some sort of question like that? So resilience, objection, handling, lost fear of rejection. So great learnings to be applied to sales job fits the profile. So exactly what they'd be looking for, for a new starter in the sales job, right? And what's good about that question is that it links to your values and your passion because you did it Red Cross. No one gets a job just for getting a job. It's because you really care about the values. So we can get deeper into the mm -hmm. person's values and what matters to them. Mm -hmm. And when you go for a job, like on point number one, that it's aligned to your passion for aviation and technology and point two with the impact, it starts if the values align, it really helps you to get the job. Mm -hmm. I had a friend once here in Australia, we went to university together and he got hired by the biggest law firm of the UK here in Australia, just because he liked the same rugby team as the guy mm. that was interviewing him. It was a team that no one had ever heard of, but <laughs> they just clicked so strongly yeah. that he automatically got off the job. And we were laughing because he got such a good job. We're in uni, we had barely started. And he got a job in one of the biggest law firms mm. because of that little something in common. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely important to tell those interesting facts about yourself. 
um, then why would you like to apply for this role? So obviously I knew what the job description was um, and match that job description to my own assets. So um, showing that I'm passionate about the company and um, like I'm passionate about the tech and all that thing uh, will keep me motivated. And that's something that I might have noted on mm -hmm. her on her answers. Sorry, on her feedback. And, and you see, like when you talk about your passion, because it is your national passion, mm. the eyes shine, smile. Mm. You can see when someone's genuinely interested in working because of the values and the work that they're going to be doing at the company. Really easy to see. Which, by the way, all of this, like I've never volunteered for the Red Cross. I have no, I've never, ever flown a drone. I love tech, but I don't really care much for aviation. So like you can see how you can show passion with research, right? Um, and even if, if it's not your true passion, hopefully it is. Like, hopefully you're going for the job that you're passionate about in the industry that you're passionate about. So if you're training, like we said in, in the previous, in the first session, if you want your dream job is to be a chef, then start by waiting tables, by working in a restaurant, by uh, like doing some like small management role in, in, uh, in a food company or something related to the industry where you want to work if your passion is actually sales and tech and aviation then start with a with a sales job start with like anything related to to that industry is going to get you in the future uh, it's going to impress the hiring managers that you're talking to because they'll see that you've built a career and this is the difference we talked about in the first session employability versus availability when you want to have a job then just apply to anything but when you want to build a career you have to make some sacrifices early on which is it doesn't almost matter what job you get as long as it's in the industry or in the company that you dream of working on um, then the next one <clears throat> so how would you go about um, launching helicopter in au or something of the sorts Pao asked so obviously I did my research on her. I saw that she had previous experience on PR. So my answer was focused around that area. So that that resonates with her and it seems to her that it's a good answer. So I, like she can see that I've done my research on the company. I knew things that were on the news, but also my research on her. So I can relate those questions to her experience. And then she threw me that oddball question on how many tires are sold in Colombia every year. And again, has nothing to do. And by the way, this was a real question I got asked in my interview when I applied for my first job. Um, and this was pretty much word to word my answer. I did step back and ask the interviewer, may I take a minute to answer, which is seen as a good thing, by the way. Um, like nobody's expecting you to always answer on the spot. So showing that you can be calm and, and composed and ask for a minute if you need it, that's a good thing. Um, and then, yeah, just did some quick calls. And if you, like, I don't know, I, I remember asking this question to somebody and asking how many cans of soda are sold in India every year. And they thought the population of India was, I think, 12 million. So if you think the population of India is 12 million when it's like 1.5, 1.6 billion people, then maybe doesn't show, reflect like, Depends on the role you're going for. You really need to know geography and population. Yeah, but I think there's a minimum of, of general knowledge yes, that you need. So it's I'm not saying you know the population of every country, but um, hopefully you know like a rough estimate of that because the oddball, it's not about the answer in the end. So if you get the population off, in the end, it doesn't really matter because the answer is what matters is the train of thought. So the population of Colombia is actually 51 million, but the fact that I knew it was 50, that's good. But if they asked me the population of Somalia, I literally have no idea, but I would have made an assumption. I would have said it's 120 million. I have no idea if that's right or not, but for my calculations, it will help me out. Um, and then I would go with that train of thought and show my work um, when I speak and then give an answer, which is also really um, and then finally, when she asks, like, what's your superpower or um, that, that, like, your assets, and that's when your, your list comes through and when it's important to, why it's important to read it right before the interview, 
because you might not be asked what's your superpower, but I can tell you some variants of that will be asked where you are asked either, what do you bring to the role? What, what do you bring to the team? What do you bring to the company? What's your superpower? What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? And all this you can actually nail if you've read, you've read that, that list before. And also you're gonna have so much confidence when you walk into the, into the session. 100%, yeah. It's all about being aware and linking and you've linked it perfectly your superpower because you've got many superpowers but you linked it into yeah. the role because you could have said one of your superpowers is skateboarding and i would have looked at you <laughs> and just go great how is that the land links to yeah, yeah fair. drones that's great so it's very important to link it but it could have been that you fly drones as you're skateboarding to yeah. do some cool shots and then i would have been great yeah. we can we can use the superpowers <laughs> So yeah, that's it, guys. That's my that's our take on on interviewing. We I know we're on time. We have ten more minutes. So if anyone's got any question or anything they'd like to comment, uh, this is your time. We'll give let's say twenty seconds for questions to start. And if nothing starts, we'll call it a sesh. We've got Tegan, Carlos. Who else is here with us? Any know. question, guys? This is your opportunity to ask the expert that has been interviewed and interviewed hundreds of times at Google. I think I've been interviewed way more times than I've interviewed. So, really? <laughs> well, well you've passed all of them, so that's great. <laughs> Any questions? All right, I think seven seconds complimentary are over means that we were very clear. Um, yeah. Well, thank you everyone for joining and can't wait to see you guys next week. So what um, are we learning in the final fourth week? Yeah, so the final week, so obviously we did so well with our interview that now we have a job. Mm -hmm. um, and for this last session, we're gonna learn a bit of negotiation. So basically how most jobs that you you'll get are going to have some sort of negotiation or sales involved in them. And next week, we're going to learn what are those techniques that can help you win a negotiation or win a sales pitch or win um, when you're speaking to somebody trying to sell your product or service or the product or service for the company you work for. Actually, also internally, I know that a lot of companies have policies towards promoting stuff it's like six months or a year but if you're really good at negotiating i've seen most international students because they worked really hard and you guys can see the world from multiple angles so i've seen most international students they tend to get promoted in the first three months oh, wow. which is very incredible so believe in yourself go in with your strength go prepare be honest like kiki has a few times said i don't know can you give me a few seconds to work it out pen and paper or you can even have your phone to write it down. You can go to Google. No one will. <laughs> you just need to find the answer because that's the reality. Google is there to solve. So if I've asked a question, if you're going to be working in our team, I need the answer. Whether you get it on Google or you connect with someone on LinkedIn or you call your father or grandfather in another country, mm. I don't mind in our organization. What I need is the answer and you for you to be a problem solver across any, any role and also to be able to build meaningful connections because if you can build a good connection with the person that's interviewing means that you're going to build a good connection with people you're working yeah. and in this case with the clients for us to grow the business. Oh, is, it, uh, is it too late to ask a question? No, no please no do. Uh, 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 one thing which uh, didn't go, didn't happen in that uh, little interview that you had was uh, negotiating on the uh, salary. So what's the right time and uh, any particular suggestions on that? Was it negotiating on the salary or was yeah. it when they asked you, what are your salary expectations? No, no. Uh, what is the time to start talking about the, and if it is not in the interview, then the, when is it? And if there's any key oh, that's, suggestions yeah, that's a great that you guys can make. Yeah, I think it really varies from company to company. Um, Honestly, when, and we'll learn about this next week in the negotiation class, but you have to know your value. So you need to understand what's your walk away price. So you have to have a range of what you're willing to work for. And then if the offer that you receive 
So, and again, this varies massively between companies. Some companies might discuss this at the end of the interview. Some companies will give you a call. The recruiter might call you. Other companies, the hiring manager will call you. Um, in my personal experience, most times the recruiter has called me. I haven't discussed this directly with hiring managers. I've never, ever brought it up in an interview or even heard someone bringing it up in an interview. So don't do that. Um, but yeah, like you need to know what you're worth. If you want to have a job that's paying $50,000 a year as a minimum or $20,000 a year as a minimum, then you know that $19,000, are you going to walk away from that job if they offer you $19,000? And if the answer is yes, then you go in the interview, you nail it, and then you wait for the recruiter to call you back. When they say, you nail the interview, we want to hire you, $19,000 is our offer you can say either no, or you can try to negotiate and say, what are the other things? Like I, my expectation was this much, a minimum of 22,000 or whatever it is, a little bit higher than that in case they want to negotiate. And I would say also, if not, what are the things that this company will bring to me that are not remuneration uh, or direct remuneration? So are they going to upscale me are they going to give me um are they going to give me free lessons car. or a free car or free lunch free yeah, laundry exactly just give the google list yeah exactly yeah <laughs> so like genuinely actually it's funny the google list because there's we have obviously our paycheck but on top of that in the company we have a massage we like personally parking, have parking. lunch laundry child care you guys have this human money. actually not child care unfortunately but yeah, there's a huge thing of things. And those things, let's say if Google were to offer me 10% less that I'm willing to leave my company for or that I'm expecting to do this job for, but then I look over the, the benefits from working for this company, then I'm like, oh. or even assign a value for what you think is worth working for that company. So um, my first job was at Pricewaterhouse. Uh, so PricewaterhouseCoopers is one of the first, one of the top four um, big accounting consulting firms with Ernst & Young and Accenture and that sort of thing. And I actually thought from the get-go that it was a little bit boring job um, and they definitely didn't pay me what I wanted. But the fact that I could put, I worked for Pricewaterhouse in merger and acquisitions as a consultant in my resume right off the bat from uni, that had mm -hmm. massive, like I was literally spending more money every month in parking gas and getting to price waterhouse and then they were paying me at the time so i was i invested into having that job and the truth is that that's one of the reasons why i managed later to get a job at google or to get a job in adidas or like to do a lot of the things i learned so much as well like things i applied when i owned my companies um so definitely you have to think of like what you're investing in it as well does that make sense? Does that answer your question a little bit? If it's more about negotiation, let's let, we'll I go think over it. If it's your dream company, take and then you'll find a way of growing yeah. and delivering. I think there's always because there's always room for growth, especially in a country like Australia. You can always develop your own bonus, and if you're over delivering, there will always be a lot of opportunities. And plus, Australia, I think I've heard from multiple sources. That Australia has the lowest minimum salary, so we our oh, yeah. base is already very good. Yeah, so you will good. never starve from any salary you have, even if you work at a, I don't know, food chain in the mall, you'll still have enough to pay for your living expenses. So yeah, it's a great question, but it's a really tricky one. What I do often when it's like a big role, I let the person come back with a proposal for mm. us, and it was interesting because this year we had a really big role that was going. And the two that made it to final, one of them had asked us for literally over double than what the other one had asked. And this was like a GM level. <laughs> and we just went, whoa, like, just like the one person came in with so many conditions of, I don't know if I'm going to work in the city. I don't know if I want to go back into stress. And they asked us for this ridiculous salary. And we straight away, he just knocked his opportunity out mm. and he had interviewed the whole way really well. And at the last point, like literally when he sent me, because I told him to think about it and send me a text message, he sent me the text. I could not believe I saw it. I'm like, am I reading this right? 
he's sending rocket out to space. Even NASA wouldn't be paying this. So yeah, so have common sense as well. And that's where Google is. Like you can literally go and seek. I think has different options because the other guy had broken down the price, mm. like the values from Seek, and he came in with a realistic offer. Mm. Yeah. All right. So awesome question. Well, um, thank you everyone for today. Any last words? Thank you. Just a little reminder, next week's session is on Thursday, right? Thursday. Yes, yeah, so right. Thursday. So please connect with us on Thursday for the final session of the employability series. And then next year we're back with it's digital marketing. 20 on digital marketing and e-commerce and entrepreneurship so it's really 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 exciting so we look forward to seeing you guys many more times so we'll see you guys on thursday and thank you kike thank for you. putting thank us you through this journey thank you so much the right foundation. so for those of you that haven't seen number one and number two of the series please go back because like everything in life we need to go through the steps to be able to build the right foundation to succeed in the future you might think that you're speeding and getting time but you're actually losing some very important steps so amazing we'll see you guys next week on thursday big hugs bye, bye, -bye. bye, -bye.